Craig, as I've gotten into this uh, subject fairly deeply under your direction, I can't help asking the question now and then, why aren't we all dead? I mean, what, what happened over the course of mass course of human history that kept us going before modern medicine and antibiotics and things like that? Well, I think you have to just thank, say thank goodness for Chuck Darwin, who discovered the principle of evolution. Our bodies have been evolving as we've been around microbes, you know, for millions of years, and we've developed these re remarkable abilities to either prevent disease from entering our body, prevent these microbes from entering, or to do battle with them once they're inside. And even today, uh, with our modern medicines, we still take advantage of our own remarkable capacity to uh, fight disease, and that's the key. As I understand it, of all the thousands of pathogenic beasties out there, only a few affect humans, uh, the species resistance uh, notion? Yeah, so there are, there are pathogens or disease-causing organisms for everything. There are things that affect daffodils and Dalmatians and elephants and even bacteria. And thank goodness, most of these have adapted specifically to that host. So there are very few organisms. We're not going to get uh, curly top beet virus uh, anytime <laughs> soon, even though it's devastating to tomatoes. But if the hosts are similar, like warm-blooded animals, for example, and humans, then these pathogens can move around. Of course, that's a source of human pathogens. Now, you mentioned earlier that our bodies have some... Uh, natural defenses. What kind of barriers do we possess that keep us uh, at somewhat degree safe from these pathogens? I think one thing we really fail to appreciate is the uh, really the awesomeness of our skin. There are so few pathogens that can enter uh, through our intact skin. And you think about the places where pathogens do enter and it's these portals of entry that are that are openings in our skin like the mouth and the nose and other orifices and occasionally there are pathogens that can actually go through our skin but but not many so the skin is a great place and then all these other openings are are well defended like our eyes heck only an inch from the brain by way of the optic nerve and they're constantly bathed in uh, antimicrobial compounds like the enzyme lysozyme we've got the ciliated tissue in the respiratory tract to move things out so so we've really evolved uh, a lot of structural defenses to uh, fortify ourselves. And then I guess there's the uh, factor of immunity. There's both innate immunity and uh, adaptive immunity, so our bodies deal with disease that way. That's right, Gene. We really have, you know, we have two big classes of immunity. One we call innate immunity, which is a nonspecific things like our white blood cells. Anything that's foreign, they recognize and they try to destroy or interfere on a mechanism cells use to uh, do battle with viruses. And these are fairly responsive. They're not very specific. But to back that up, we have what I think is the most remarkable capacity. And that is that uh, given enough time, our body can recognize foreign invaders like viruses or bacteria, and then produce antibodies against those very specific proteins that will destroy them. And uh, and that's just the, the most powerful. We, we really, there's no pathogen that we cannot make, given some time, an antibody against. And so it, it's, we're just unbelievably versatile if we have a little time. Wow. So when modern science and medicine did come along, then we have immunizations, which really means to enhance our immunities. Is that I, that's exactly right. So when, we, when you get an immunization, you're just... Uh, Instead of taking the disease-causing agent, you're just taking the one portion of that and you're injecting that in a person and they're learning to make antibodies against that. So when they come in contact with the actual disease agent, you're, you're ready to do battle. And then we get rid of that time factor so your response is rapid and you won't even have any, any symptoms. And you know that's the key behind the measles vaccine, the influenza vaccine. Uh, when we have the capacity to do that, it's... Uh, it's very powerful, and of course, we've eliminated diseases. You, you think about smallpox, probably the most devastating disease in the history of mankind, and now it's completely gone because of the smallpox vaccine. So that's the, the power that's within our grasp. And this is the subject of the science Focus essay for this unit. Be sure to read that. <laughs>